Hello. Hello. We'll get started here in a minute or two. Okay. Sounds good. All right, not sure who's going to join, but uh, let's get started. Mm -hmm. Do we have anything new in events? This is the week we're here, and the Telcom TV, they're having a online telco, Cloud Native Telco Summit. Open Source Summits next week with the One Summit Regional Day. Maybe some stuff there um, coming out related to the working group and other things that we're doing over here. And I think Oliver, you said Matrix is gonna be going to the DTW. That's right, yes. Is there any type of online virtual for that? Uh, no, not that I am aware of. Um, I will take a peek, but I don't think so. All right. If there is, maybe drop the link in there for that. Yep. Mm -hmm. not, no worries. Hey, Nikolai. Hey, everyone. All right. Um, anything else interesting happening soon in September or early October? All right. Uh, let's see. So Telco Day schedule, I think, is coming out today. It's a half-day event, afternoon, um, day zero event. And we should see the schedule announcement sometime today. Oliver, is there anything we need to talk about or think about for the Elephant developer testing form yet? 
Uh, very good question. Um, I'll have to come back on that one as well. I don't know what the latest is. All right. Maybe we can follow up about that. It seems like something <clears throat> that might be relevant for the Cloud Native Telco Day and other stuff we're doing. Maybe to extend or continue with what we're doing there at Telco Day. Yeah. Make sure it's aligned. Um, mm -hmm. All right. Welcome, Ildika. I guess let's jump into the PR <clears throat> review. I'll see if there's any others. You know, there's at least one. Okay, this is it. Has anyone had a chance to review it? Looks like we have something from Tom. I'm going to tag you, Ildika. I don't know why you weren't already tagged. Nikolai, you're already tagged. <clears throat> Let's see what Tom had to say. Well, actually, I guess we can just give a quick overview. So been working towards trying to get some more best practices. This is the first uh, one in a while uh, proposed fully. We've had a bunch of ideas, but officially put a pull request in, hoping to get keep the momentum and get some more in so everybody be thinking about best practice, if there's one you're motivated to contribute to, at least write up something summary or anything, uh, then please help put it forward. This is the first in a while. So single concern per container or a single process type. So a CNF, a CNF's containers, um, or I'll, I'll say a CNF itself, may have multiple internal services providing the functionality. And if those services that are providing are broken into different processes, so they're not the same process type, for example, a Apache web server and a database would be two different process types and they have different concerns. So one is about data storage, the other is about serving HP request. The recommendation for this best practice is to split those into their own containers instead of putting them into a single container. That's what this one's about. Um, <clears throat> for the call and for Ildico and Nickline, if in case y'all haven't seen this. Actually, I'll just ask, have y'all looked at these? Nikolai and Ildico? I haven't had the chance. <clears throat> All right, I'll just go through it now. Uh, Nikolai, have you looked at it? No, no. All right. <clears throat> so the summary is uh, pretty much what I just said. We're saying that you should split it out. Um, given some references. So there's a, a little bit that's related to microservice practices, and that could be like size, and there's a lot of other things that will tie in on the motivation and goals that we're trying to achieve the benefits. <clears throat> um, quick overview though, prevent scalability, um, trying to leverage the platforms orchestration system rather than internal container orchestration. Uh, upgrades are gonna be based on the individual containers start at the start. So you're building in like for upgrade process, dependencies and other things versus having it any type of a process, maybe a that HP server is upgraded and there's some type of problem or dependency between it and the database that's tightly coupled because they're in the same ones rather than loosely coupled in different containers with strong APIs to talk to them, between them. Um, and that's kind of tying in with this as well. This managing the service concerns is 
individual units since you're splitting them into containers. This is just the high level. And so this is this little blurb here. It's a best practice that Docker talks about. So splitting them. <clears throat> this is the single concern principle related thing and applied it to containers with Docker. Docker. They don't specifically talk about microservices, but that'd be another area. All right, motivation. So this section where you're trying to um, look at the different areas that would be important to both the end users, so CSPs and whoever else is running these applications and the developers, integrators, that sort of thing. So lifecycle management. This, so you could look at motivation would be like problems, challenges that one trying to solve. Um, so the first thing is about if you have multiple process types in a single container, then you need to somehow manage how those are working. The orchestration of those processes, keeping them alive and that sort of thing. Uh, how are you going to scale each of them up? And if you are splitting them into containers, then you're going to be more likely to leverage the orchestration engine that you're using. So pro probably for most people, that's going to be the default orchestration in Kubernetes, but you'd be tweaking it there and using all the capabilities that people are working on for lots of applications versus your own individual. If you're looking at doing more efficient um, use of all your resources, then you can think about allocation per service or concern. Um, this also, I'm gonna jump into the response time. So you wanna do faster response time, of, of scaling and, and go, um, bringing it down. So if you have a peak, you want to be very responsive, but you also want to be resource efficient. If you have them all together, then you're going to be scaling based on a large container versus one that's scaling maybe individual uh, sets of containers. So if you only have one service that's getting hit hard, like maybe the web server, but your database is fine, then you only need to scale up your web server and not your database. Um, upgrades. So if you're doing upgrades, it's talking about problems with the dependencies between them. This security would be semi-related, but you could find it even without upgrades. So any type of vulnerabilities, if you have a separation of, of those into containers, at least you're taking advantage of the container namespace. There could be some other things. Um, limiting the attack surface area. So observability uh, for whether that's debugging and other stuff for developers, they'd like visibility. Maybe you have two different teams of developers working on the different services. Like maybe there's some people that are, you have a custom storage engine and then you have some type of API engine for request and doing other type of things. So this could be two different teams. And if you have them together, then <clears throat> trying to figure out where things are, what's going on, services, um, having problems or whatever, you're potentially gonna have more trouble if, if they're all together than split. Um, so some of this digs a little bit more in the development cycle on the tightly coupled. And then test coverage would be maybe even more. So if, if they're tightly coupled and how are you doing test coverage versus if they're self-contained in the container. So then we have the goals, which relate back to those dives in. So the orchestration, using the Kubernetes orchestration engine, talking about microservice architectural practices, if you're already following these. So if you're an end user, 
looking at the ops team or doing integration and you're already trained and maybe you're trying to move to microservice patterns or you want to take advantage of those, then this practice would be aligning with that. Um, the scaling that I was talking about. So just reasoning about it. So this could be maybe the people creating these applications. They could give feedback or the um, definitions that are provided that talk about best ways to scale the different pieces. You can reason about those as a developer and know, okay, if we get this type of load on this service, we need to scale like this. This other service should scale like that. Similarly, for the end users, the operators, you know, maintaining whoever's helping to run and looking at the services, they can reason about it because they're split into different services. That makes that easier. The resource utilization. So if you're only scaling the HTTP server and not the database, um, you could scale that up rather than both. And maybe the, the database or storage, whatever, is allocating special type of nodes. Well, the, the HTTP server, or whatever service this is, the split, maybe doesn't need those, so it could scale much faster. But the main thing is both the developers and recommendations and the operators can decide on that and be more efficient in utilization. Um, upgrades, so ideally like any type of upgrade, if it's a single container and you can try to reduce the risk because you know it's only going to upgrade a one part that's been well tested. Um, we'll go through every one of these. The security, I think I kind of talked about it. I don't think we had this specifically up there, but finer control of permissions because you can set them per service. So maybe the database needs some some type of storage type permissions, but the web server wouldn't. So you would have finer control over the web server service and maybe you tighten it on the database for some other area. Um, on observability, thinking about log met messages and other things for whether you're debugging from uh, it's already in production and trying to figure out some area or development wise. If you're looking at output from a single container as a single service, then trying to figure out something um, is going to be easier if it's not um, combined, if it's split out, it's going to be easier. If you are looking to monitor the activity, maybe for optimizing, um, scaling or some other thing between the service communication. Maybe they, you're having a spike of requests to your storage backend and it's unexpected. So you think, okay, we need to scale that. Um, so that could tie in looking at debugging. Maybe it's not in the log output, but there's something going on. So if you're exposing that inner process communication, instead of it being within the container where it's harder to view, if it's between well-documented, defined APIs between the services, that's going to be easier to monitor. Um, we have a lot of similar stuff here in the software development cycle, talking about the improvements. Um, some non-goals. So these are out of scope. We're not saying these are part of it. They may be good practices, but they're not part of this suggested best practice. So the how best to communicate on the APIs. We're not saying how you should do that. It's probably a good idea to have some practice around that, but we're not doing it. If you're any type of supervision and management of the process within a container, which may or may not be needed if you're using external orchestration, but we're, that's out of scope. Um, any type of um, issues with homegrown management systems, out of scope. Implementation details, specifically saying how to split, like we're not trying to say you should definitely split your storage and your web server or any other thing. We're not trying to define what should be split. 
we're at a higher level saying that they should. And if there's anything that gets into best practice that we want to expand on for specific ones, then we could talk about individual microservice best practice. But that would be a different proposal. Any questions before going in a little bit more into where this applies, where we think it applies and stuff? Questions or comments? I think that there is no questions or comments. Go ahead, Taylor. All right. So this is the um, a shorter version of the proposal versus the summary has a little bit of all of it. So a CNF with multiple current concerns should be split into services or process types for each of those concerns into separate containers. Service dependencies should be handled between containers through well-defined interfaces. It's high level. We're not saying how that should be, but that's kind of related to this. Pod specs for the CNF should provide scaling and monitoring information for each of the services during <clears throat> running in different containers. So these last two are the high level of uh, directing where we want to go once you split. Um, so these are going to help with the defic efficiencies um, re on resource utilization, helping with monitoring, <clears throat> helping with um, any type of going from loosely coupled to being able to chain it, it, the different services and reuse them as different parts, whether that's internal or connecting to other uh, applications. So this probably should be all pod types. So this would be whether they're core to Kubernetes, um, maybe escalated privileges or non-escalated. We think this is a, a good practice in general for any type. Some user stories. Um, this one is based on a Intel uh, document, which there's a link at the bottom, but trying to have a 5G applications that are configurable. You can mix and match them, high degree of programmability and, and mix these. So separate concerns is going to help support that flexibility and programmability, including hardware requirements. So if you have a specific service within the application that has requirements, then this will help because you'll know that that single container is going to need some type of hardware requirements and the efficient scaling and other things. So that's what that ties in. Um, also supporting automation goals because all of the pieces should be well-defined interface on containers, coarse strain, grain dependencies. So meaning that they're going to be contained within the container, but external the container uh, you're going to limit the dependencies so it'll be easier to put those together. And then the testing as well. So all of those are there. So this is one of the use cases. Here's another use case that we're putting forward um, as a diagram. So looking at um, service-based architecture, the SMF, that's this right here. And it has a lot of different interfaces. So if your SMF, so this would be only if, it's like this, if it's split or it's implemented to have multiple processes that service these different communication, UPF, AMF, PCF, UDM, all these different things. If you have it split into different processes for that type of communication, it's recommended that you would split that up because um, you may have, whether it's um, potentially servicing 
upgrades. Maybe your PCF is getting upgraded, but the container that's running these services <clears throat> wouldn't be interrupted by any type of upgrade on this side because you have these running in different containers or the dependencies are going to be limited to the interfaces for the service um, that communicates with the PCF. Or another thing would be maybe your communication between the UPF and AMF to the SMF are much uh, more variable. They scale up and down based on the peak end user usage during the day. And so maybe those need to be scaled up, but the communication uh, to the UDM PCF don't. Well, that would be another one. So this is just to give context um, on how these could look and why we're recommending this. There could be a lot of other use cases. The simplest one you know, up there at the top for the application would be the, the web server and database. Um, some notes. So we're not we're not saying that a container can't have multiple processes. So Apache can start multiple worker processes. This is a web server. It can have multiple worker processes that it forks off to handle uh, the request. It can also have multiple threads. So those are both fine. Java is going to run a Java application. The provide service might have many, many threads. That's fine. Uh, definitions. So there, I think we referred to monolithic applications. So this is what we're talking about. Application not separating concerns into microservices. We're considering monolithic. And then we're saying a monolithic CNF would be any application, monolithic application that's focused specifically on network type concerns. That's what we mean when we say a monolithic CNF and multi-concern containers. A container having more than a single process type providing services for different concerns. All right, and then we have a bunch of references to many different places, including um, some vendor stuff like this Ericsson information, the Intel that paper that I was referring to a minute ago. Um, testing, we wanna validate that is there more than one process type? And we actually already have a test over in the CM test suite. There we go. Does, are there any comments or questions before we look at any type of reviews? I think it's very comprehensive. I like it. All right. Uh, I wanted to add something and I'll ask a question. If my microphone is working, hello. Yeah. Yes, ah, sorry. Okay. So, uh, oh, one of the things that I might have missed here, I don't know if it was so. From the benefits, uh, typically, uh, also, uh, is mentioned in such documents polyglot, like the capability to have uh, you know the, for example, the front end written in the. I don't know, Node.js or whatever, right, is uh, uh, suitable for a front-end application to be written into. So that's, I don't know if it's crucial here, but, you know, it's a benefit. Uh, the other thing uh, that um, I wanted to ask, I'm not sure if it's, again, if it's the place here to 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 recommend this. Do we have any, any at least feeling and internal understanding within the group when we recommend this do we have any specific recommendations about um i would say if i split my functionality into two separate containers uh do i can i put a restriction to run them on the same worker node uh, or do we recommend that these functions uh, should be completely 
distributable across multiple worker nodes, multiple data centers, even I don't know, you know, a cluster these days can span um, geographies. Hey, Nikolai, I guess it's, it's a very valid question. Um, yeah, I guess in this particular um, principle, we, we didn't talk about uh, both, basically, we were just centralizing, discussing about uh, how to split things in the container. Um, I guess in order to, to achieve what you're saying, it's like, yeah, it's, it's uh, maybe, well, you, you, you're, you know, like you can use like the pod definition to ensure that all these pods are going, to, I mean, all the containers inside of that pod is going to be in the same location, could be worker node or whatever. Or if for some reason you need to um, keep it more separated, yeah, you can use certain um, Kubernetes scalar uh, policies to distribute, like a, have like a, a better high high liability. Uh, but yes, I guess uh, for this particular best practice, just we just centralize in um, how to make the decision like separate like separate the, the the process types inside of the container so i don't know if that was uh related with your question or other part of the question um yeah i mean i'm fine i don't maybe i should just bring this in the issue itself if I yeah, to... I think it would be good to add it straight in as a, a comment. So we okay. have a pull request history. Um, and I'd like it there first. And then the place that I'm thinking immediately where we should at least say something about it. And, and you're welcome to add something would be the notes section. Okay. Okay. Um, and... I don't know that we want to say out of scope because I actually I think we should consider that in scope. Um, one thing to think about, and this could be for you as well, Nikolai, is do you think that we should stop the pull request? Is it something that you feel strongly about that we should address like as directly part of the proposal? Or is it something that we could put comments into the pull request and then maybe do an update later? Um, I think notes, I could see it as add it in right now and probably how I do it would be a suggest edit uh, where you go down and um, where is it? I passed it, I think, oops. Um, yep, sorry, I don't know what just happened. But if you do a suggest edit where you, go in here and review. If you if you think you have an idea for that, then I think at least in the notes section, it would be good. Yeah, I will. Okay. I would hesitate to put it in the main proposal unless we're gonna yes. talk about it more. Yeah. But it's also, relevant. Oh, no, no. The only thing that I was going to say, like if, if for some reason the document is not reflecting that those things, I mean, it, it's valid to just make it more implicit. So maybe we were just assuming things, and uh, and it's better to that that the response or the explanation has to be in the document. Sorry, Taylor. Go ahead. <laughs> No, that's good. Um, all right, uh, let's look at Tom's unless someone has anything else. Um, Ildico, um, Lucina, Oliver, if y'all have anything, speak up. Otherwise, I'll jump into Tom's comments. I'm good. All right. All right, let's jump in then. 
Um, great. So he's trying to suggest that it. Um, I think I'll go over here. It might be easier. All right. All right. Um, okay. So he's talking about potentially the the so motivation is challenges versus what we're claiming are going to be the benefits. Or and really, it's not claiming the benefits. It could be a goal uh, for benefits we hope to achieve, not that you're going to achieve them. But we're talking motivation here. So right now we have resource utilization is less efficient in multi-concern containers which require allocation for all components, so all services, all processes, rather than individual microservices. And then um, he's saying maybe soften it. It's likely to be less efficient. Um, as a container run table will look to allocation of search resources for all components. I, I think that's okay. Uh, to say that it's I'm I think I'm okay with that. I'm gonna give a thumbs up for this one. What do y'all think? I I think that oh, go ahead, Oliver. Oh no, I wasn't saying anything. Sorry. No, I I was saying that it's okay. Also for me, uh, we don't have any proof or any metrics to reject like a. Uh, make like a hard statement in this case. So I guess you better to so it's valid to just make it more of a statement like so I'm also okay. Can you give a thumbs up on it? Yep. I'll do add suggestion from batch. Um, let's see. Next one. So this is still in motivation. Should we add a may here? It's not given. All right. CNS with multi concern containers have a large surface area. CNS with multi concern containers may have a large surface area. I'm fine with this. Um, I think this one is probably not as big a deal as the last one. I could probably argue that just immediately because they have multiple processes, they actually do. In fact, I'm kind of just thinking about this. If you have a web server and a and database server, they may not have any security problems, but their attack surface area is larger because people can try to find vulnerabilities in two different process types. I think they do have a larger surface area for attacks and bugs. I disagree with this one to change it. What do y'all think? Well, the example that you give us, that's right. Um, in any, as soon as you have, we're talking about multi-concerns. So if you have one process, then it's only going to have one surface area. But as soon as you have two process types in, so one process providing a service in a container. Now you have two processes providing two different services within a container. You're you're at least doubling at that point. I don't see any other way around this.
Yeah, uh, well, the, the example that you gave uh, was was a little bit more clear. Like, uh, I mean, if, yeah. if you have by definition two different types, so the the libraries and and, and the, the the security types that you're addressing in every single process are going to be completely different. So just by definition. Yeah. Uh, but in that sense, you're increasing the the the, the surface. The dark surface. Okay, I'm just going to add a comment. I'm not going to add that one to the bat the batch. Does anyone disagree with or have a comment include or whatever? Any objections to not accepting this? No objections. Okay. Security vulnerability in one process type affect all of the process types in the same container. Okay. So this one, I agree. So it may have no effect. So you may have a, another process that even though there's a vulnerability, that other process has, there's no effect, you know, you could say that it's kind of, it would get very nitty gritty on this. Cause I could say maybe your web server has a bug and someone gained access to it, but your database is so secure that they don't access the data. But you could, if you have access to the web server, you could stop all traffic to the database. So that's affecting storage requests. I don't know. Um, this one's getting nitty gritty on it. I'm kind of good either way. So I might word it to use the may though, if we were going to say security vulnerabilities in one process type may affect others versus even likely. So I just make it lighter. May affect, may not affect. What are y'all's thoughts? So the, the thing here is like, I mean, it, what we, we are saying is not necessarily like if you have one vulnerability in one process, I mean, it's not necessarily that that will affect the other processes. Like it's, it's basically that that's it the mere difference like um like open the possibility to not affect other processes or yeah i'm gonna put my own suggestion here that i think it should be may that's all I'm not going to accept it. I'll let someone else look at both of these and decide what they think. All right. Observability. Reduce visibility communication activity of services in multi-concern container. Um, so just adding because statement. Okay. All right. So he's saying that he's trying to make this more understandable this statement so the container runtime will only be monitoring the init process rather than the internal container signals um this is true but he's not thinking about the actual communication between the services but that's fine he's not expanding on that he's just saying they're only going to see the init process signals, which is true. I'm I'm okay with this. It comes to the same thing anyways. We're we're saying that if you split it off, then you're going to see more. And he's giving a reason why.
Are y'all good with adding this? The only thing is like, do we have like a definition for supervisor? I mean, or like just providing context? No. The container runtime, but that's known to people in Kubernetes. Mm -hmm. um, and I think for the end users building these systems, they would, they're, they already understand the idea of the, the runtime. And you have some that are actually using different runtimes um, instead of the default. So I think it's okay, but do you want to say? No, no, no. The, 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 last, the last word, like it's in parentheses, uh, supervisor. Um, I don't know if we have to oh. give a, I don't know, context or standard or, because the rest is fine. Like, I mean, container okay. runtime is fine. In process, I guess, it's well understood. I, I agree with you. Um, I'll just put it like this. Victor, and I. All right, I'm just going to put that and not accept it for now. All right, what's next? Um, all the way down to, oh, user stories. What do you say? This is a long sentence. I'm not sure it reads right for me. Maybe the following. Okay, that's great. Here's what he wants. An SMS with different services providing communication between AMF UPF, PCF, and other services in an environment where many sessions are initiated and end during peak times. Where? And end. Okay. This may require. What did he do? And see how I did it. May require during peak times. So he broke it. This may may require. I like the two sentences. I'm just good with it like that. He split it up. Yeah, and it's more more readable. Yeah, I like it. Any objections to accepting? No, I'm um, okay. All right, notes and constraints. All right, 
So this is just saying, if you're gonna run multiple processes in the notes, and this is like a sub recommendation, not the main proposal that's under notes. We recommend instead of writing your own supervisor, you use one that's already out there that's well developed, tested, et cetera, like Supervisor D. Okay, so what did he say? Perhaps add some additional context that was provided from the discussion. So this is in the working group discussion section. As the container runtime monitors the PID1 and uses its signals to report events, knowing when a container has stopped. So this is talking about what actually happens. How do you monitor? What are we trying to do with the application? So this is giving an idea of what a supervisor is if, if someone doesn't know without having to go off. That's fine. He added a little bit more, but we're not trying to add the entire discussion into this best practice. We give a link. If you want to go understand, go read it. If you're complaining and saying, we can do a supervisor, but you don't know what a supervisor is, I'm not worried about that person. They should go read or provide context on why it's important. I'm good with this one. Any objections? If not, I'm going to add it. No objections, I'm adding it. All right. Does he have more? Nope, that's it. I'm gonna sign off and commit three suggestions. All right. So that brings us back to conversation. I'm going to do re request review from Tom. Oh, while we were going, there's more suggestions. Um, but we only have three minutes. I'm going to accept that, Lucina. Thanks. Um, oh, that's awesome. Did you do a suggest edit for that, Nikolai? No, I don't see it. This good, is a good, good one. Yeah. Oh, I guess. Okay, okay, good. Do a suggest edit and we can accept it. Um, I see, I see. Probably okay. later this, you know, in the week we'll do it async. Um, that's a good one. So th this is, would be go in the software development life yeah. cycle. Um, add that in, that's great. So. For those that didn't read it, you can have multiple languages, um, libraries, dependencies, all of that stuff with your service, which it can be nice, especially with large services or multiple teams um, or working with maybe different, uh, totally different orgs. All right. Um, I think that's it. We got to the end. We've added comments for everything. Uh, Lucina, I'm going to re-request. And Nikolai, re-request since I added yours.
so we will try to go through those this week and then maybe accept it in next week. If you have ideas for another practice, especially if you're having problems with work that you're doing, if you think something's needed and you'd be motivated to help write up stuff, then please add it to the Slack working group ideas or drop an issue or go take a look at the issues. We have a bunch of best practice ideas and you can thumbs up or comment on them. I'd like to get started on the next one um, soon. Within next week, I'd like to maybe get be able to get started and, and start having some sessions like we did. We do have some drafts on some that are issues, but welcome to have any others. Uh, one area that we've been thinking about, especially Victor and I, would be looking at NEF.io and the best practices in there. It leverages KPT, so there's a lot of configuration management items that could be interesting. Um, NEF.io is also doing a lot of stuff with GitOps patterns, so that would tie into other projects like Flux and Argo CD. So deployments and the automation side of things could be some best practice areas. So just to be thinking about it. And hopefully we'll get going on, on that one. We'll have a best practice, um, maybe the top three picked uh, next week and get this pull request merged. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day and a great week. Please review and look forward to next time. Cheers. Thanks. Have a good week. Thank you. Bye-bye.